Hello, my name is Steve Goodwin. I'm back on the water with another anchor to test. This one is a genuine Delta 44 pound or 20 kilogram anchor. It is in new unused condition, donated to me by an individual. But before we view the footage, let's go to the workbench and see how things measured up. This very popular anchor came out a little heavier than advertised at 46 pounds. The tip came out at 10 pounds for a tip to total weight ratio of 22%. The shank scantlings are generous. There's plenty of width, plenty of height, and the lever arm is not too long. So I'm not, not too concerned about the strength, even though we don't know the grade of metal. However, all that metal in the shank will do nothing to help setting, as it certainly lessens the tip weight. Speaking of which, the tip, or toe of the anchor, appears to be cast in a single piece and then welded along that line to the fluke of the anchor. The Delta anchor shares some resemblances with the previously tested anchor right XL anchor. Some of the noteworthy differences between the two anchors are the Delta's thicker shank, lighter tip weight, and more blunt tip shape. The sharp tip of the XL is made possible by the use of stainless steel in that region. Both anchors tips are weighted in steel, therefore neither anchor will require the melting of lead during regalvanizing. Okay, that's enough workshop talk. Let's see what this anchor can do. First test is in my sandy mud seabed. We're in 26 feet of water. With my four foot bow roller, that's a total of 30 feet. I've got 105 foot of road out. Works out to be a scope of 3.5 to one. I do not treat these anchors gently in my testing. Here I'm backing down at about two knots and the anchor, we didn't get to see it, but it did dig in nicely and stop the boat. Um, I'm doing I'm doing the same thing I've done with pretty much all my testing. Again, it's it's not nice treatment. I don't gently try to nurse these things into the seabed. I, I try to jerk them around. I purposely want to see failures. I don't want to see normal anchoring. Even more abnormal is my 180 degree reset test. This is where I drive the boat up over the anchor at three and a half knots. The sound is the chain dragging along the camera, so I nailed the reset course. Unfortunately, the camera's become fouled, so we don't get to see much. Uh, we do see here that the anchor is dragging. I could feel great lurches through the boat. The anchor was trying to dig in, and it eventually did. It's hard to say how long that anchor drug, but I'm going to guess about 20 or perhaps 30 feet. That sound is the boat's engine in reverse. Here I'm just verifying whether or not the anchor is truly set, and it is. Here I'm giving it one more try on the reset. Uh, unfortunately, the camera is still fouled. Uh, but th there the anchor releases. Uh, we don't get to see if it's flipped over or spun, but it does not reset right away. Again, I can feel lurches in the boat. It's trying to set, and it eventually does. Eventually, when it finally bites, it bites in hard, and the boat does stop abruptly. It's unknown whether the fouled camera had anything to do with the anchor's performance. Uh, unfortunately, it stayed fouled through the recovery. I did note a fair amount of mud attached to the anchor on retrieval. Next test is in the same location. Only difference is we're less scope. It's just 2.5 to 1 scope. We're getting some better pictures. Uh, boat anchor digs in within an anchor length and stops the boat abruptly from about a two knot back down. Now the boat's driving on by at three and a half knots for the reset test. That was a chain ghosting on by. And we get one of my infamous backflips. Uh, we're lucky to have these pictures. I'm using my side view camera and for it to remain aimed at the anchor uh, is, is lucky. We see the boat still pulling hard. Note that the chain is lifted up off the seabed. Uh, did bring the boat to a nice stop and I'm going to say that anchor dra drug maybe only 3-4 anchor lengths. Here I'll give it one more reset. We notice that the anchor pivoted rather than flip over backwards. Um, don't get to see much, a lot of turbidity, uh, I'm feeling lurches in the, in the boat, uh, but it's not stopping. We'll just let this run and see how far it goes. Your guess is going to be good as mine about how far. Uh, it did eventually, though, uh, hook in. It, this anchor hooked in every time. Uh, and, and you'll see here in a minute I'm going to do this repeatedly. Um, and it, not once did it fail to set, but it at times did take uh, a bit of time. Here's the anchor during retrieval. This time not a lot attached to the fluke. Um, pretty significant blob at the tip only. 
For this next test, I'm going to use my simple down view camera instead of that side view. It just is far less likely to become fouled. We're still in that same sandy mud location. We've got the scope back up to 3.5 to 1. And for this series, we're just going to focus on this resetting. I'm going to drive the boat back and forth, up over top, 3.5 knots. Uh, I'm going to do it 10 times. Okay, the initial set went real well. It set within an anchor length. Both boats passing by. Here comes the first reset. Anchor releases. Drags two, three, maybe four anchor lengths. And resets. Stops the boat. Here's the second reset. That's clearly a backflip. We could see the shank flipping up and over. Dragging. Could feel some lurching. And stops the boat. Here's the third third reset. This time the anchor stays buried and just rotates and only moves about one anchor length. So that's real good. You'd like to see that every time. There's another backflip on the fourth reset and another drag. This one a little longer. But it eventually does firmly engage the seabed and stop the boat. Here's the fifth reset. That one, I believe, was just a rotation. It stayed buried, and again, it stops the boat within an anchor length. Sixth reset. Another backflip. I think this was my longest drag. Hard to tell how far. Maybe 20, 30 feet? Maybe a little more. You'd like to see the anchor stayed engaged and just rotate every time. And some anchors um, have, have more of a tendency to do just that. But every anchor that I've tested has done a backflip at least once. That was a seventh reset. We couldn't tell exactly what happened there, but it ended up with a drag. Note here that each and every time, though, the, the anchor is resetting. Sometimes it takes a little longer but it, it does get the job done, so that's pretty good performance. Eighth reset was a partial backflip. Here's the ninth reset. Can't tell just what happens there. Short drag stops the boat, and the tenth and final reset just getting too much turbidity, can't really see. Maybe, maybe there was a backflip there, I, I couldn't tell. A uh, bit of a drag and stops the boat. On retrieval, it took quite a bit of effort to break out. And we'll see that the fluke is just about spotless. There's just a little bit of mud at the tip. Next test is my so-called deep set test. This is where I tie the road to the back of the boat and I can develop a lot more thrust. You'll see those numbers here in a minute. So we're in the same sandy mud site, same scope, 3.5 to 1. Initially here the wind is just moving the boat backwards as I'm getting the road moved to the stern of the boat. And here's the initial setting under power. This is 2000 RPM which has been measured at uh, 330 pounds of thrust. I hold each of these for 30 seconds and I'm gonna go ahead and let this run. Um, it's gonna take a little longer on the video but um, th this anchor does something that's not ideal and uh, you'll, you'll see what it does here. It, it, it just basically it never really dives into the seabed like you'd like it to see and you get a bit of turbidity here, but what, what you get is heaping. There's the next power increase. We're at 2,250 RPM, which has been measured at 430 pounds of thrust. Anchor's still moving, and there now we're getting a little better picture of this heaping. Uh, see those two clumps there either side? There's a fluke under there that's forcing material up rather than the anchor being forced down. Here's the next power setting. I've increased it now to 2,500 RPM, or 530 pounds of thrust. Anchor's just slowly creeping along. It is, it is penetrating a little more. There's a little bit less shank showing.
Next power increase is 2,750 RPM. It's been measured at 635 pounds of thrust. Anchor still creeping along. We've got clumps of that heaped material kind of falling away. It's not a good sign. You'd, you'd really like to see this anchor going down rather than just horizontally. Other anchors that I've tested that showed the same signs of heaping uh, eventually pulled out. Uh, those were the Bruce anchor, the Four Fjord anchor, and at short scopes even the Fortress would do that. Here we are up to 3,000 RPM or 750 pounds of thrust. Anchor still creeping along, real, real slow. I have no idea that this is moving uh, from the surface. Okay, there's the final power increase. It's the most I can get. It's 3,300 RPM and has been measured at about 910 pounds of thrust. Anchor still moving along, material still heaping. I'm starting to see more anchor shank. I think the anchor is now lifting. And now the anchor is noticeably going much faster. But unfortunately, I cut the power just as things were starting to go. It's possible that anchor would have released fully had I, had I maintained the power. So that was pretty marginal performance. I'm going to conclude that this anchor's ability to dive is, is not at the top of the pack. So as a contrast though, I'm going to show some footage of an Excel anchor undergoing this same test. Uh, my footage of the steel Excel anchor was cloudy, so I'm going to show you the aluminum uh, Sarka Excel number 5 anchor in this deep set test. This anchor only weighs 27 pounds, but it has the same external dimensions as the steel version. So here we see the anchor. It does not have a tendency to heap. There's oh, a little bit of a mound uh, in the aft part where the flukes are, but the anchor moves forward slowly and just disappears. This is what we would like to see in our anchor under high high loads. I don't want to see anchors creeping along. And here in the final power setting, movement has stopped and the anchor has disappeared. This will be the last test sequence. This is at my sand and gravel site. First test will be at the 3.5 to 1 scope. Unfortunately, we see the chain has fouled the camera tether. Won't see much of the flukes, but we'll get an idea of how far things have drug and get a good look at the substrate. So the initial set was just fine. Stop the boat, and here's the first reset. Boat drove on by at three and a half knots. Anchor appears to have remained engaged and just rotate. It did drag a little bit, but it, it, it firmly stopped the boat. Here's the second reset. Don't get to see much, but we can hear that the anchor stopped moving right away. It did stop the boat abruptly. So now we're on to a 2.5 to 1 reset test. I was running short on time, so I did not retrieve the anchor between these two scopes. And, and unknowingly, the anchor camera remained fouled. At least we can hear what's going on, and this anchor took a, quite a while to reset, drug considerably. There we get some pictures as that piece of seaweed moves out of the way. And you can just see that there's heaped material being moved along, and I guess what I'm seeing is that this anchor, even in the sand and gravel at this scope, doesn't want to dive. It's pretty much on the surface. It's generating some holding power. It did eventually hold the boat against 2000 RPM reverse power, but as you can tell, it didn't really dive in to the seabed and it has a tendency to keep moving. There's the last little surge of movement. So not a lot of holding power. 
on retrieval we once again see the anchor comes up clean uh, by the way I don't believe this seaweed that has been all, in all these pictures for the testing of this anchor I, I don't believe that seaweed has a, a real negative effect on anchor performance this isn't rooted type seaweed it um, it's pretty much just floating and sitting on the bottom and it, it uh, again I don't think it's a big factor but that that's all my testing for this anchor I'm gonna conclude with a few thoughts kind of a wrap up about it and well here's my here's my thoughts on it I think that this Delta anchor has reliable not not stellar but reliable setting performance it does not clog with seabed and I'm a reset test it does reset every time it has less than ideal ability to penetrate the seabed and it has less than ideal holding power at least the scopes and seabed that I was testing hope you enjoyed the footage of this highly anticipated anchor test so long